Sweet, thank you, Errol. Um, I'm happy to be here today with you guys, and uh, thank you for coming to my talk. Um, so I'm Samira, and hopefully you guys enjoy Star Trek. Uh, it's one of my favorite uh, shows, but um, so who am I? I'm a designer dev, um, a dog mom, and a MIT Reality Hack 2023 finalist along with my team. I created an app that uh, actually placed memories within physical space, allowing people to interact with each other um, in that way. Um, I am also a volunteer skateboard instructor as well as a horror writer. I'm currently working on a novel and a organizer for Bar Camp Philly, which is an untech conference in Philadelphia. Also, um, you can find me in these two places. I'm not very good with social media. Uh, <laughs> I'm actually very terrible at it. So um, what am I gonna talk to you about today? So it's uh, what is XR, um, why it's important, uh, the pillars of XR, some of the front end tools as well as the visual design tools and uh, platforms and game engines, as well as a roadmap, although I will preface this with like everybody learns in different ways and the methods may not be uh, for you, but they did work for me. And there'll be a few interactive examples uh, to show you. So if you uh, wanna use your phones, there will be a QR code as well as two links. So what is XR? Um, XR stands for extended reality. Um, it is an umbrella term that's used to encompass multiple types of experiences uh, where the digital and physical realms interact, as well as um, overlap each other, and they can also affect each other. Uh, the XR actually encompasses uh, three different types of uh, three different types of uh, pillars. Uh, they would be virtual reality. Uh, mixed reality and augmented reality. So AR or augmented reality is an overlaying of virtual images over our physical world. Um, there's marker-based, marker-less, and location-based AR. So if you want an example of location-based, that would be Pokemon Go. Um, Marker-based would be QR codes where you scan a QR code and a 3D image comes up and uh, Snapchat is an example of markerless, um, which includes uh, Snapchat filters and things like that. Virtual reality is the complete immersion of users within a digital world. Um, usually this includes headsets, interact, uh, immersive audio, as well as haptic wearables. Um, if you've seen Beat Saber, uh, it's a really popular game on uh, the Oculus Store, as well as Super Hot VR. I don't know if you guys have played it, but it's a very like beautifully designed, minimalist um, shooter game. Uh, it's, it's very cool. <laughs> I've spent a lot of time playing it. <laughs> And mixed reality, or MR, is a mostly seamless blend of the digital and physical world. So uh, the new Apple Vision Pro is an example of a mixed reality headset. Um, Light Field Labs, if you uh, want to look them up at any time, it's a really cool company based out of California that um, creates really cool... Um, I think it's actually one of the best examples of how close we can get to a holodeck right now. Um, they create uh, holographic images using light and actually place uh, like large panels that you can interact with that are just, it's absolutely mind blowing. If you've ever seen an, one of those uh, 3D billboards that are like coming out at you, they do a lot of stuff like that. And as well as the Microsoft HoloLens, which um, is a mixed reality headset that also uh, is used right now in training for uh, people in professional and um, in professional trades. So spatial design. I'm pretty sure many of you are familiar with um, a with, uh, the UX process and product design. Um, and unless you're specifically a 3D designer, um, we pretty much work on a 2D canvas and we only have to think about the devices that we're designing for. But when it comes to uh, XR, you definitely have to think about how the people use the space that they're in as well as the device that they're using, um, including audio. And uh, that's something that is that's something that is um, a little hard for people sometimes, uh, getting into spatial design. You also have to think about audio, and it's uh, more 4D design rather than 3D design because you're adding a lot of different elements to it. So 
front end tools. Um, if you guys have a developer mindset, um, if you do front end, uh, there are tools like A-Frame, Model Viewer, uh, 3JS, Twa.js, Thrace.js, uh, Cientos, Babylon.js, uh, P5XR, Play Canvas, Wonderland Engine, OpenXR, and um, WebXR. So all of these, uh, from everything excluding OpenXR and WebXR, use the Open uh, use the WebXR API, and to uh, create XR experiences. Uh, Model Viewer is a it is a tool that you can embed in your web pages to show interactive 3D models. A-Frame is a declarative HTML framework that is uh, pretty easy to get a handle on and um, to actually create some really cool web XR experiences. Uh, 3JS, uh, Chua.js, Cientos, those are all JavaScript libraries that help you um, deal with uh, 3D code, um, as well as Babylon and uh, P5 is actually an add-on uh, to another JavaScript library. Play Canvas and Wonderland Engine are specifically uh, game engines made for the web to help create uh, better experiences for online gaming and um, just uh, 3D design. So uh, first example is an A-frame scene. Um, I created a template that uh, shows just basic things that you can do with A-frame, which include, a, uh, which include um, creating environments uh, very easily. It's something that you can honestly put together in around five to 10 minutes. Um, very easy to get a handle on, and they have really great documentation on the A-frame website. So you can actually like move your phone around and like see through the environment too. And um, the model in there is actually, I'm just a huge nerd. I, I love Yu-Gi-Oh, so that's, <laughs> that's, uh, that's there. Um, some visual design tools. Uh, while I know this is an open source conference, um, I actually hope this helps, uh, this helps you get more into the XR space and advocate for more uh, open source tools in XR because I think it's uh, extremely needed. Um, so, Visual design tools include uh, Krita, Figma, Spline, Bezzy, Blender, ShapesXR, uh, Tavori, and DaVinci Resolve. So um, you guys probably know Krita. Um, you can, uh, you know Figma, you can always export your designs and put uh, 2D designs within an XR space um, for, uh, like overlays and just like menus and stuff. Spline is a web uh, 3D platform that allows you to create 3D objects and um, interactions on the web. Uh, Bezzy is also a web tool that creates 3D interactions and you can create uh, rapid uh, XR prototypes, uh, which is really cool. They're very new and um, Bezzy itself is actually a working prototype and they're adding new features all the time. Blender 3D, if you are a 3D designer, um, it is an open source tool and it is uh, extremely useful. It's uh, probably one of the best ways to get into XR because they have a lot of plugins that help you uh, export your designs to uh, XR spaces. Um, Shapes XR is a tool that you can actually use um, in the XR space. You can find it on the Oculus Store and design uh, for XR within XR. Um, Although uh, Tavori is the same, although um, it's a it's a freemium, so it, it may not be the best choice for you, but it's uh, it's a good choice, and I, I think they're a lot of fun to use. Uh, DaVinci Resolve is actually a uh, uh, visual effects tool. Um, it's also free, but uh, there is a paid version of it, and um, visual effects and XR kind of go hand in hand. So if you know a lot about like motion design and stuff like that, uh, it's a really easy way to get into it. And here we go, it's an AR portal. There is a desktop and mobile play version. Um, I actually included this because it's an example of how like uh, some browsers actually don't uh, quite support XR uh, functionality yet. <laughs> and um, Bezzy is, uh, they, they do a good job of like creating uh, ways around it, but um, this is actually a portal that I created using uh, 
what is it called? I've actually, there's a uh, Skybox Labs. Yeah, Skybox Labs. Um, it's an AI tool that helps you create skyboxes very quickly. So if you wanted to do something uh, really quick and create a prototype, this is a really good way to do it with Bezzy. And we get to game engines. Game Engine, so uh, ARKit, which is uh, by Apple, is a game engine or platform, as well as Metaspark, Lens Studio, Godot Engine, Unreal, and Unity. Um, so Unity, while it is a great tool and they have great resources, um, I would personally suggest going with Godot. Uh, there's, a, uh, there's less of a learning curve. and as a designer, you don't have to actually know how to do uh, like code in C Sharp. If you're coming from a front end perspective, you can use JavaScript, but they also support a uh, node-based design. Uh, Unity also supports node-based design, as well as Metaspark and Lens Studio. So education roadmap. Um, I'd say you start with familiar tools, like Krita, Figma, um, Penpot. If you use it, it's, that's the best way to start. Um, learn a little bit of 3D uh, because that's a, it goes hand in hand with uh, XR. You, you need to know some 3D basics. Um, go to a hackathon, uh, actually participate in a game jam. That's really how I started. Uh, MIT's reality hack is really great. You meet a lot of cool people and you learn how to uh, just jump in really quickly. You only get three days to build a working prototype and it's a, it's a pretty cool experience. Um, and also just start any project, like, I don't know, change your portfolio website, make it a 3D site, and that's probably a good way to start. Um, I did upload this uh, so that you can find the slides, and here are links to uh, the Bezzy YouTube to get started on tutorials, CG Cookie for Blender, they do a really great explanation, especially for Blender updates, which just updated to 4.0. Um, and Microsoft's XR for Beginners, it's very comprehensive. It's an eight-week self-paced course. Um, you can actually download the repository from GitHub. And, oh, I actually think we skipped a slide. <laughs> yeah, so why XR? Um, currently, there is a need for designers in the space. Um, it is very much a uh, dev party over there, and <laughs> um, not every experience is intuitive, and I think that um, we've seen with the rise in uh, UX over the last like decade or so as a uh, serious discipline or people taking it ser more seriously, um, there's definitely merit in designer input, um, especially when you're dealing with uh, people interacting in the real world. Um, it's great with access to education. Tools like the uh, Merge Cube actually help teach children uh, about different things like science. Um, and it's very, it's, it's just a very cool thing to see in schools and uh, it makes it very accessible. Um, because we all have phones, AR is also a great way to uh, create uh, bonds between different people, the creation and sharing of art, um, as well as professional training with mixed reality, and socialization and accessibility. Um, I'm not sure if you guys have seen the Marvel show Echo, but um, there is a scene in which uh, Wilson Fisk gives uh, Echo some contact lenses that also function as a mixed reality app in which um, she's uh, deaf. And as he talks, it's signs and she can see the signs and vice versa, he can hear what um, she's saying when she signs back to him. And I think that's a really cool proof of concept and ways that we can apply XR in the future for good. And it just makes things more equitable across the board. Sorry about the flashing. But um, yeah, any questions? Any questions, folks? Yeah, OK. Oh. <laughs> Hi. Thank you for the presentation. It was great, really inspiring. Um, how do you go about um, uh, you know, trying and testing uh, these kind of uh, 
softwares, websites, or things that are made in XR? Like, uh, what, what, it, what, how does the process look like? Um, the process is pretty similar to a uh, usability process within UX. Um, the only thing that you're adding is really uh, the idea of spatial design and figuring out how things actually work within uh, a 4D space. Um, it's, it's pretty similar, the design process across the board. It's just learning new tools and uh, learning the uh, best practices. Hi, uh, first time caller, long time listener. Um, can you tell me a little bit more about like the open source uh, tools or process or like how prevalent you saw like open source tools in your learning journey? And like, if you could recommend, like point out some of the ones on the screen if, you, if they were particularly open source. Oh yes, thank you wife. Uh, that is my <laughs> wife. <laughs> so, um, a lot of the open source tools uh, are visual design tools like Blender. Um, Bezi isn't exactly open source, but it's very free. Um, and Krita, of course. But there aren't a lot of open source tools specifically for XR. And I'm hoping this like definitely gets people uh, to advocate for more of that. Um, and also more XR features within design tools. Any more questions from the audience? If not, I have one. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah do you mind? Amazing presentation, thank you. The first uh, XR experience I remember was in 2015 with Google Cardboard and New York Times created a experience in a, a refugee camp where Syrian families were running by around you mm -hmm. and it was quite mind-blowing, especially uh, among every person I told who worked in humanitarian aid and, or even wanted to. Um, just found that to be such an amazing usage. And so I wanted to ask about, uh, for you know our, our friends and family in the sort of global majority countries, or what's the lowest hardware barrier to entry uh, with this type of thing? Is it, is it still like, a, uh, it's also the most immersive experience. And thank you for the examples that are 2D and browser-based. Those, those are really helpful. Do you have any other suggestions? Um, yeah, definitely. So I think Google Cardboard for a headset is probably uh, your best bet. Um, Merge Cube actually also has its own headset. Uh, they have proprietary software that you definitely have to download and like upload to the headset itself. Um, and I would say mobile phones. Um, it's the best way to do AR experiences at this point. And um, yeah, if you can get an Oculus, I'd say uh, or Quest 2, I'd say get the Quest 2, because it does everything that the uh, newer version does, and it's it's a little bit cheaper. But um, yeah, those are the, the best way to get in with uh, hardware-wise. Uh, if there's no other questions, I'm going to ask one. Uh, you mentioned game jams. Uh, I love a game jam, me. Um, but do you have recommendations of the places you would go for game jams that aren't maybe the MIT mixed reality um, event. And also, like, if you could give one piece of advice, like, your first time entering that space, like, what should you read? What should you, like, open with conversationally to break into the community? Oh, definitely. Um, I would say either itch.io or uh, DevPost. Um, they have tons of XR game jams and uh, hackathons online. And um, even if you're, because there aren't really a lot uh, physically, so um, it takes a lot of looking. And honestly, maybe someone will start one here. Uh, but they're super fun. Um, I'm sorry, what was the second part of your question? Like if there was one like cultural in to that group, if you've never been to a game jam before, what's the thing that you should read or be aware of if you want to be less like culture shocked, um, I suppose? Um, I'd probably say, uh, hmm, that is a good question. Um, either uh, Microsoft uh, XR for Designers is a good one. Um, it's very comprehensive and it, it's, a lot more information than what I gave here. Or um, it's called uh, WebXR and the WebGL uh, API. It's a book by A-Press. Um, that's a really good one to look into. Thank you. Um, thank you so much. Let's give another thank round you. of applause.